In the laboratory, we often have to do separations. Uh, maybe solids from liquids, maybe liquids of two different density. Uh, maybe we want to uh, collect a precipitation like we would for DNA. Maybe we want to uh, precipitate out an impurity and save the supernatant. Now we do that with a centrifuge most often. And there are a number of different laboratory centrifuges. So in this video, we're going to take a look at centrifugation and um, some of the common laboratory centrifuges that you'll work with. This picture is the inside of a common laboratory centrifuge. And what you're looking at is a, a rotor that's holding four um, sample holders. I'm holding up a rotor out of a small clinical centrifuge. And you see, as you can see, if I give it just a very quick spin, the buckets want to swing up from centrifugal force into the plane of the rotation. Now if I add a couple of samples and we spin those, as you can see, the sample is now going to be spinning and centrifugal force is going to be applied to the to the, whatever's in the tube. Uh, the moment of a centrifuge arm is from the center of the rotor out to wherever the specimen is. Uh, generally the longer the moment, the more g-force. Um, g-force is a, a function of both the moment, the distance from the center, as well as the number of RPMs or rotations per minute. Now this picture shows a, a basic laboratory centrifuge. This is a very small one that you might find on a tabletop. Uh, these are for students' use, where it's not going to have the same g-force as some of the larger centrifuges. Uh, it's designed for uh, what we say pulsing down or very quickly separating um, a precipitate uh, from, from a solution. It's fairly easy to operate. You punch one button to open it up, raise the lid. There's a small um, rotor cover, and then our samples go in. And we always want to have our samples opposite of each other. And there you can see the technician is counting the holes to make sure that they are evenly spaced. We recap it. Close the cover. Now here's a smaller version of that same tabletop centrifuge. Uh, this one is for doing much smaller tubes. Uh, we would use this for polymerase chain reaction techniques. This is a large bench top centrifuge. It has a, a, a number of features. For instance, it has replaceable rotors on it. It has a variety of different carriers that can work with uh, tubes as small as 1.5 mil all the way up to tubes that are uh, 50 to 100 milliliters. Um, it's a refrigerated centrifuge. Uh, that's why there's a gasket around on the outside. And you can see the lip there where this fits down into it. We can actually freeze materials in here. Here you can see the technician performing a rotor change. She's going to remove the swinging bucket rotor that's in there and place it with a fixed angle uh, rotor. The tool to do that is a, is a uh, specialized hex key. And you just turn it uh, counterclockwise to, to remove the screw. And then the rotor lifts out. And the new rotor goes in. This is a fixed angle rotor that would be used for smaller tubes. And then with clockwise rotation, we remount the screw. And finally set the parameters. This is a vacuum centrifuge. Vacuum centrifuges are used for drying. They're going to be used, for instance, we use this with uh, DNA techniques to remove alcohol. It's very important to check the membrane on this and make sure that it, that it seats well against the, the top. And the buttons are very straightforward. Uh, we can set the time of the run and the degree of vacuum.